or joining us live now is a legal practitioner, Johnson Argo, to take a look at this issue as it's unfolding. Good evening, Johnson. How are you? Good evening, Maureen. It's good to be here. All right. Well, let's just start by understanding, first of all, mm -hmm. how INEC did not comply substantially with the Constitution and the provisions of the Electoral Act. Actually, INEC did not say they did not comply. INEC's position is that they complied. But, but the judge is saying they yeah, didn't. Well, it's debatable because, uh, well, on the face of the judgment, they just said it is not complied with. But each party is still contending. They still have their right to appeal. But the substance of the judge, judge's uh, decision is that you haven't uh, used the beavers properly. And you have, uh, the, on the basis of the beavers report that you issued, there is evidence that some other person should have won the election. Uh, well, the parties are still contending as to whether the particular or the proper beavers report issued was relied on by the courts. And that is why there are, uh, let me call it, two sets of judgments, one by the majority of the court and one by a minority member of the court. That mm -hmm. The judgment is actually not unanimous. It's two to one. In the first set of uh, judgments given by the lead, uh, lead judge and a concurring judge, mm -hmm. they say that the Beaver's report issued at some point earlier should be the one to be relied upon. And on the face of it, Oyetola should have won if you subtract a certain number of votes that are not captured in the Beaver's report. But the, uh, the dissenting judge says that we should have been relying on the Beaver's report that captures the entire thing, which INEC has testified was made after the whole Beaver's system has synchronized. So the, the dissenting judges of the opinion that the later Beaver's report mm. is the more authentic and the one that should be re relied upon. But the majority saw it the other way. Why are we having this back and forth about majority and minority seeing? Because the Beaver's is something that Nigerians are having so much hope on, especially <laughs> with regards to the forthcoming elections. That with the beavers, we can't get it wrong. I had in interviewed one of INEX commissioners, mm. and you know, we were thoroughly, thoroughly assured. Mm. And now, to have uh, the beavers being questioned, I, I don't think it is the beavers that is being questioned. What is being questioned here is the reports, the authenticity of reports that came, which of the reports is correct. Mm -hmm. Has uh, or let me put it this way: Was there a possibility of somebody feeding some figures to the beavers after the correct report has been? Um, the fact led? that someone can feed whatever means manipulation. The justice says a kume led panel mm -hmm. in his judgment said there was overvoting on mm -hmm. the examination of beavers manipulation. We also learned that beavers was not using all the LGA. So which begs two questions: Meaning that the beavers, which we all hope would ensure that there won't be rigging, uh, can actually be manipulated. And also that there is this um, possibility that not every area will be covered with regards to the beavers being used during the election. Now, now I'm going to assume that the Justice Kume decision is correct. Mm -hmm. But there is still some debate here. Whether I'm not trying to defend INEC, but these things are questions of technology. So the functions of beavers here is not that people will not try to be wrong. I mean, we not try to do wrong. But as technology, what it is, is that if you do any wrong, there will be thrill of that wrong, and there will be evidence of it, and it will be easier for people to retrieve their mandates mm -hmm. from the court. So if we assume that Justice Kume's decision is correct, beavers has done its function by showing that thrill to show when and who or where the things go wrong. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. So if uh, it is that the first report, which INEX says uh, was issued at a time, the Beaver system has not synchronized, yeah. uh, it turns out to be that the second report is evidence of manipulation. So Yetola has now used the product of the Beavers to retrieve his mandate. But so, that means INEC has some questions to answer, though. Because well, why would the result be released when it has not synchronized, when the collation you know, had not been synchronized? Maybe this will be a lesson to INEC. So if he does not want to be perceived as incapable or as fraudulent, it will develop a system or guideline that allows it to issue authentic results and authentic reports. Mm -hmm. But I don't see the technology as faulty. 
the technology has done its job. If you say the report is manipulated, it simply means that the machine has provided thrill of that manipulation. Mm -hmm. So I, for me, this is good for democracy. All right. Yeah. Well, Governor Deleke has faulted the judgment, and he has called it uh, a miscarriage of justice, and he wants to appeal it. Now, do you agree with this position about this unfairness, and on what grounds should he be appealing legally? This will depend on the reasons the judge, judges have given. So if he thinks that they should have, for example, he, he may be alleging that the evidence that we are considered, we are not properly considered, there, there is exclusion of the correct evidence. He can appeal on that basis. Mm -hmm. He can say that the judgment is against the weight of evidence. Mm -hmm. So he can appeal on He has a lot of these things. Lawyers will decide for him, mm -hmm. uh, will advise him on the proper grounds. But on the face of the stuff, I mean, on the face of the judgment, it is easy for someone to say, I am not satisfied. And that is the result of every contestation. And that is actually why there is room for appeal. And this appeal system, where, uh, I mean, allowing someone to express dissatisfaction at an appellate tribunal yeah. is a, the good thing about this kind of democratic practice. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's dig further into mm. what the Electoral Act says about overvoting. I'm not sure I'm satisfied that I've gotten an, enough answer on that. Yeah, what does, the, the, what the, does the Electoral, Electoral Act, Act actually say is that, that uh, the, at uh, the end of election, before, or before you vote, you must go to the accreditation point mm -hmm. and the smart card reader or any technology that INEC might enlist to assist it in the accreditation of people will be used to accreditate you. At the end of the period of accreditation, you will vote. And the eligible voters are calculated on the basis of the number of people that the technology used for accreditation captured such that if there are 10 people that have been accredited, if there is any vote above 10, there has been an overvoting. So in a situation where you have, say, 1 million votes, but the machine or the system of accreditation adopted by INEC captures just 500, the extra 500 people has overvoted. So that should, in fact, that's exactly what has been applied in this instance. The machine or the report, Beaver's report at the time, um, the petitioner, that's the APC and his candidate, obtained mm. the Beaver's report, showed that at least 181,000 people had not been synchronized to the Beaver's system back end. Mm -hmm. So what the tribunal simply did was to subtract the votes of 181 people 181,000 people from the total votes. And okay, in which, in which of the polling units we are affected? I, I identified about 744 units. Mm -hmm. So you subtract these votes from 744 units. What did each person get? The sum total of the, every person's, uh, I mean, every candidate's votes mm -hmm. at the end of the day was subtracted. Uh, for example, in the case of Oyechola, 60,000 votes or thereabout that was, we are gathered from the several for the four polling units we are subtracted in the case of uh, Adeleke about one, one, 112,705 votes that we have gotten from those 744 polling units we are subtracted and whatever that remained it showed that Oyetola got about 314,000 votes and Adeleke got about 290 votes creating a deficit of I mean like a, a winning gap of about 20,000 votes so in this instance the tribunal had no option on the basis of the evidence it decided to accept to hold that Oyetola has won the election. If it were under the old system, the, the tribunal will go ahead and ask, this number of ruling units we have cancelled would have given about 180,000 votes or so. Mm -hmm. So we would not declare the election conclusive because if you count the possible votes from these 744 units, it is possible to get votes that are higher than the winning margin. So under the old system, what the uh, tribunal would have done is to probably declare the election inconclusive and order a wrong in those units. Yeah. But what this, this system has done for us is it is easy to trail or trace where the fault is from and isolate that particular... But could it have been avoided, though? Because this is just one small state. 
I believe it what, can be what does that signal I, I believe it can about be the forthcoming elections I believe it can be avoided and I think it's actually confidence building rather than discouraging because it says to everybody go about your normal business ensure that people vote and ensure that the beavers is used in the accreditation don't allow anybody to allow anybody to tell you to vote don't worry we will accredite letter no just ensure that the beaver system is used in the accreditation and at the end of the day go home nobody is going to manipulate the result because whatever the beavers has accredited is what we are going to use to determine who won okay so finally what what was the import of this judgment going forward it says that nigeria is getting ready to ensure that as many people as are accredited are the only number of votes expected in every election so accreditation is now as important as the number of votes itself. Well, thank you, Mr. Justin Johnson Argo. Uh, Mr. Johnson Argo is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much for your time it's my and pleasure. insight. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.